Hi guys, it's Chelsea and today I'm going to be giving you my tips for towing a trailer. And if any of you guys are new to my channel and you just clicked on this because you have a trailer that you need to pull but you have no idea who I am and you're probably thinking, how is this really young girl going to give me tips on how to pull a trailer? Well, I've been pulling a 23 foot trailer for almost two years now and I've driven close to 100,000 miles in the last year and a half. So I, I got this and I am well suited to give you some tips here. So let's just get straight into this video. So tip number one to pulling a trailer is how to turn properly and the biggest tip that I can give you here is to swing wide especially on right turns what I like to do is if I'm taking a right turn into a lane I like to put my driver's side tire almost like on the double line for oncoming traffic if possible I and if there's no one there I'll just straight up get in the other lane almost and uh, the reason you want to swing wide is because if you don't and if you don't pull forward first a little bit before you turn your trailer tires are going to hit the curb and potentially even try to go over the curb which can cause a lot of damage inside your trailer if things get knocked around you just don't want that so try to avoid hitting the curb and do that by swinging as wide as possible tip number two is for when you are getting gas when you pull up to a gas station first and foremost truck stops are the easiest because there's you when you look on a map and you look for a gas station always look for a flying J or a pilot or some type of travel center they're just made for big rigs and rigs that are much bigger than the trailer that you're probably doing so try to go into one of those if you can when you pull up to a gas pump after you pump your gas before you pull away from it make sure that you don't just start turning your vehicle you need to pull forward as far as you can before you start turning because say this is your car and this is your trailer when you start turning either way your trailer is immediately going to start turning in that direction and you could hit the pump and even if you're swinging away from the pump and not turning towards it to go around it even if you're swinging out and you're on the end and you're going away from it the back end of your trailer is going to go like that at the axis where the wheels are so you could still hit the pump so pull forward as much as you can before you pull away from a gas pump Tip number three is for reversing with a trailer and this was like the biggest thing that I needed to learn how to do initially but you catch on pretty fast after you learn this tip and someone told this tip to me and I've been using it ever since. Whichever direction you want the end of your trailer to go, take the bottom of the steering wheel and put it in that direction. So if you want the back end of your trailer to swing out to the left when you're reversing, take the bottom of the steering wheel and turn it to the left. This might be reversed on the camera, I'm not really sure, but to the left side of your body. And if you want to turn right, vice versa, you just take the bottom of the steering wheel and turn that to the right side of your body, okay? And that's the biggest tip I can give you for learning to back up a trailer. I, I after I learned that, I got used to reversing really fast and I hope that helps you guys as well. Tip number four would be to get extended side mirrors. I got some at Camping World and they've been really helpful for me. When you are towing a trailer, that trailer sometimes has the tendency to block your view and so switching lanes on the highway can get a little complicated if you can't see the other lane. So get extended side view mirrors they're just ones that you can attach straight onto the side view mirrors you already have on your car and you can take them on and off as much as you want and they just help you see the other lanes properly number five would be to get an external braking system i do not just rely on the brakes on my car in order to stop my trailer i had a, another braking system installed that runs from the trailer all the way up to the car and there's a little box that sits right underneath my steering wheel that I can adjust how much I want the trailer to break every time I brake. So they go simultaneously. When I brake on my car, that also 
activates the brakes that are attached to the trailer so that they're stopping at the same time instead of just relying on my car brakes to stop this massive load that I'm pulling behind me. That would wear down those brakes so much and so to make it easier on your tow vehicle, just get an external braking system. It costs a little bit of money but it's totally worth the investment. Number six would be to get a hitch that works for you. Depending on what kind of tow vehicle you have, it could be really easy for you to pull a trailer or it could be kind of difficult for your car. In my case, I don't have the best towing vehicle on the market, but I make it work for me. I got a hitch installed on the car that also has room to put weight distribution bars on top of it and a sway bar just in case, I don't know, I'm just trying to prevent sway when I'm driving and I don't fishtailing is like one of my biggest fears so I try to avoid that at all costs so get a hitch that works for you I have a couple different things that attach to my hitch like not only do I just put the the hitch on the ball right I also have two bars on either side that I can adjust the tension for and that helps distribute the weight of my camper trailer and keeps the tail end of my car a little bit up more instead of just sagging really low in the middle where that hitch connects. I also have two chains that I put on so if for some crazy reason my trailer gets detached from my hitch those chains are still there. I also have a, another cord that attaches to my hitch where it connects to my car so that if again for some crazy reason the thing gets disconnected this little line will tug and it'll activate the brakes on the camper so that it will stop the camper and then of course like i said i have a sway bar on there as well to help me prevent fishtailing tip number seven would be engine braking and this is something that you see truckers do that drive the big semi trucks and stuff next time you go down a really steep grade or a mountain notice how little truckers actually hit their brakes if you're ever following one you're not going to see a whole lot of brake lights and that's because they're engine braking so what that means is that when you are going down a hill and it has kind of a steeper grade which is making you accelerate faster than you want to, instead of just riding the brakes on your car which will wear them out and cause them to overheat and stuff, you can engine brake which is basically shifting from drive into a lower gear. Usually in automatic cars underneath the D for drive there's a 2 and a 1. If you can switch down while you're driving it is safe to do this. You just switch down into 2 or 1 depending on the grade and that will help your car slow down. Instead of riding on the brakes, your car is just going to slow down and you might rev a little high with the RPMs in that case, but it should even back out as your car slows down and that way you are not wearing out your brakes so much. Engine braking can be seriously important and I know that it saved my life a couple of times going down steep grades. Ah, uh, man, I don't know what I would have done without that information. So, yeah, next time you are going down a mountain or a hill, just try it. Shift your car from drive into a lower gear and just see how your car reacts. It should slow your speed a lot, and that will help you immensely on the road. Number eight is, this is a tip that I'm, I'm going to give you. I don't know if anyone else will give you this tip or if it's even advised, but for new drivers, for people who are just starting out pulling trailers and stuff, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this tip. Um, some of you guys might disagree with me. If you are on a highway that has four lanes, for example, never stay completely in the right lane. Please do not ride in the left two lanes ever. Like just don't just don't ever be there even just don't be there it's so annoying to other drivers and bro you shouldn't be going that fast anyway if you're driving a trailer just you you're gonna have to go slower get used to going slower but my tip would be to stay in the lane right next to the very right lane and the only reason I say this is because that lane is usually the safest for big rigs and I notice a lot of truckers do this as well and that's because 
when you are in the lane right to the left of the right lane that means that you are not having to deal with merging traffic you are not having to deal with cars coming on the highway cars getting off the highway which can be really really stressful especially for new drivers like it was for me when i first learned how to drive a trailer it was stressful because I thought that every single time people were getting on the highway, I had to move over to the next lane in order to let them on and avoid accidents. And that was really hard for me because then I would have to shove someone else out of that lane so that I could fit there. It was just a lot. It was really stressful. So what I started doing was just riding in that second lane because people can still get around me. They can still go to the left of me and pass and I'm not having to deal with all the merging traffic to the right of me either and I just feel like it creates a safer environment on the highway in general so that's just something I do if that's a piece of advice you want to give a shot go for it I don't know if someone's gonna get mad at me for saying that but it's it's been really handy to me and I hope that uh I hope that you understand that logic <laughs> all right tip number nine would be to distribute your weight properly in the trailer itself okay so i know that your first reaction to adding weight to your trailer is probably to shove everything in the back end of your trailer to avoid putting a lot of weight on the front end where the hitch is and i know a lot of people do that because they're trying to avoid adding weight to the hitch and creating this divot where the trailer connects to your car however that's a mistake that a lot of people make when you shove all the weight that you can to the back end of your trailer you are way more likely to start fishtailing on the highway which can be an absolute disaster if you don't know what fishtailing is it's basically when you're pulling a vehicle or when you're towing a trailer and your trailer starts wobbling back and forth like this while you're trying to drive and it can cause you to drive kind of sideways it can push you around and it can even completely flip you over if you are going too fast and there's so many dangers in fishtailing a lot of people will try to break really hard which will make it even worse and there's just fishtailing is a whole nother subject and a whole nother video but all I can say um, to avoid it and maybe I'll make a video on fishtailing in general but when you are distributing weight in your trailer make sure that you do not actually put everything that you can towards the back of your trailer i know that that seems the most logical for avoiding hitch weight but you either need to just get a better hitch system or a better tow vehicle if you are that worried about having that much weight on your hitch because it is not safe to have all of the weight towards the back of your trailer distribute it evenly and honestly the safest part for it really is towards the front where it connects to the car but i i know a lot of people don't want to do that so just distribute it throughout the trailer as evenly as possible that's that's my biggest piece of advice for weight distribution in the trailer tip number 10 is to know your route because when you get into old cities especially in the northeast part of the country there are bridges that were built a really long time ago and you don't have to worry about this too much on highway systems like on main highways but when you get into cities and in some of the smaller suburb areas there are bridges that are really really low and i've seen bridges that only have a six foot six clearance rate for how 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 high you can be i guess height restriction is the term i'm looking for here but anyway there are bridges with like seven foot height restrictions and there are big rigs that cannot fit through that i know that i cannot fit through that and i'm a pretty small trailer so because a lot of these cities were built before big rigs existed before trailers existed and all that kind of stuff a lot of the bridges are just so low so know your route know if you are going to be running into any bridges you do not want to take off the top of your trailer know whether or not you are going to be going up any really steep mountain grades pay attention to grades i'd say anything um below six percent is like totally doable when you get to the seven percent grades and higher you're kind of starting to push it with a trailer depending on your tow vehicle you can probably do it or not but like you know be careful just know the percentage of grades for hills that you're taking no height restrictions for bridges know your route 
Tip number 11. I don't have 11 fingers. Okay. Tip number 11. Leave space for break-in. When you are driving, you have to remember that you need way more space to stop your vehicle than you usually do when you're not towing. And that's because you are towing a lot of extra weight behind you and that weight has momentum. So just because your front car is stopping, this is still going. So you need way more space to stop your vehicle. Leave room for braking, especially on highways, especially when you are approaching a traffic jam. And honestly, if for some reason you are watching this video and you never even intend to tow a trailer, please do not use the room that people, truckers, RVers, people with trailers attach them. The room that's in front of them, they're leaving that there for a reason, especially when we're approaching traffic areas. Please do not use that as an excuse to just cut into there and switch lanes because there's room there for a second. Please do not cut in front of us. Please do not cut us off. It is really hard for us not to hit you when you do that. Okay, so for the people towing things, leave a lot of braking space. For the people that are witnessing the towers, please do not use that as an excuse to cut in front of us. Thanks. Tip number 12, overheating your tow vehicle. Okay. So this happened to me when I first started towing. I was in Las Vegas, right by Death Valley National Park, and it was like 126 degrees, and I was new to the concept that cars can overheat, okay? I'd heard of it, but I had never witnessed it happening. I, I didn't know what caused it, but I, I found out. It happened to me. My car started overheating, and it was a nightmare, and so, I was going up a pretty steep grade, pulling my trailer in really, really, really hot weather, and of course my car started overheating. So I noticed that the little meter was going from C, and it usually hangs out in the middle, you know, but it was getting way up there to like the H in the red zone, the dangerously hot zone for the engine. And I didn't know what to do, but since then, I've learned and now I'm going to share that advice with you. If you ever notice that your car is overheating or starting to overheat, one of the best things that you can do is stop driving. So you can pull over on the side of the road if you can and just wait a little while for your car to cool down. Another way to help take heat away from the engine is to turn off your air conditioner. and. It's going to suck because it's already probably really hot outside, which is contributing to your car overheating. So turning off your air conditioner might not seem like something that you want to do, but it is going to be extremely helpful in cooling your car down. If you want to go even a step further, what you can do to take heat away from your engine is turn your heat on. So you are going to be blasted in the face with really hot air, but because it's going into your vehicle and it's shooting you with hot air, it's taking that hot air away from the engine, which is going to cool your car down faster. So if you are ever overheating, just keep that in mind. That is an option. It sucks. You're going to sweat a lot, but it, it helps. It helps from your car exploding. And tip number 13, last but not least, I believe would be to stay in the very right lane when you are going up and down mountains. And I know that earlier I said that when you're driving on a highway, I like to stay in the lane just to the left of the very right lane, the slow lane. But when you're going up and down mountains, it's a different story. Pay attention to what truckers are doing. Pay attention to what semi trucks are doing because when you're going uphill, you're probably going to go really slow. We go really slow. Sometimes even on like a 55, 60 mile per hour highway, going up a steep grade, I can't get above 35 really. So what I'll do is stay in the slow lane, in the right lane with all the truckers that are also going extremely slow because they're carrying huge loads as well. I'll stay in that lane with them and put on my hazards. If I'm going under 40 on the highway, I put on my hazards and it's a rare day that we have to go that slow, but it does happen when you're going up and down steep grades. So just keep that in mind. If you're on a mountain and you're going really slow and it could be so slow that you could cause like some kind of accident or something, 
pay attention to what the truckers are doing, stay in the right lane, put your hazards on, and creep up the mountain. You will get there. Don't push your car too hard. Don't stress out too bad. Just cruise. Just cruise up the mountain. And same when you're going back down the mountain on the other side. Stay in the slow lane. Engine brake if you need to. Even if you're going way under the speed limit, it's okay. It's better to do that and keep a slow pace while going downhill than to continuously gain acceleration because you're going downhill and then have you come around a mountain bend and just fly off the mountain because you're going way too fast. So pay attention to what truckers are doing on mountains. That's my last tip. I hope this all has been super helpful for you. If it has, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. Seriously, please do that. And um, yeah, if you have been subscribed to my channel for a while and you made it to the end of this video, congratulations. I appreciate that. Please make sure that your little bell notification is on because it got turned off for a bunch of people. And yeah, last but not least, I just want to say thank you to the people that have become patrons of mine. I seriously seriously appreciate it none of this stuff would be possible without you and thank you to the people who have bought our zines and been supportive in that way it's been so cool to have that that aspect of like our expression and being able to put an artistic side of ourselves out there into the world and the fact that you guys want to see that enough that you have actually purchased our zines thank you it's really cool and um yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thanks